Uh, hola. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning in uh, America. Good afternoon in uh, Europe and Asia. My name is uh, Sorin Miku. And uh, as the organizer asked me, I will be the chairman of this uh, uh, session. Uh, I am um, extremely glad uh, to be part uh, of uh, this anniversary workshop dedicated to a person I met uh, 30 years ago and who played a key role in my professional development, I would say. Dear Enrique, for everything you have taught me, for the support you have given me, and for the friendship uh, you have shown me, I thank you. And I wish you many years of good health and equally impressive scientific activity. Let me now uh, uh, introduce our uh, first uh, speaker, uh, who is uh, Juan Limaco uh, from uh, the Universidad Federal Fluminense in Brazil, uh, a well-known uh, researcher in control theory with impressive results and uh, who will present us uh, uh, a talk with the title, Null Controllability of a Nonlinear Parabolic Equation. Please, Juan. We don't hear you. You are mute. We don't hear you, Juan. Juan, we don't hear you. You have to activate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes. 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 Yes, Juan, I listen to you. Yes. But you need to, yeah, yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thank you for your attendance to this special event. It's an honor for me to participate to Professor Enrique Suazua on his 60th birthday. This work was done in collaboration with Professor Enrique Fernandez Cara, Irene Marin Gay, and me. Uh, one more time, thank you for your participation. Uh, in this work, we we'll study the neural controllability in dimension two and three, the following model. Y G minus gradient times A of Y, gradient Y equals F characteristic function of little omega with A G belong Q. Y lateral boundary, Y equals zero, Y initial state, Y X zero equal Y zero. Where A from R to R is a C3 function that poses bond derivative and the zero less than n, less or equal a of r, less or equal capital A. The my idea is obtained with a regular initial state y zero, a regularity uh, result for rho zero b and partially divided with respect g or rho zero tilde b. And from this, we get more regularity from rho hat y. This allows us to estimate the following term, the gradient uh, times of a of y greater than y minus a of zero greater than y. Uh, this uh, system on one dimension, uh, uh, yg minus a is uh, partially divided with respect x, a yg times yg equal f characteristic function of little omega uh, with lateral boundary y equals zero with initial state y0 equal y0. Uh, definition one, 
it will be fit, the one is locally null controllable. And then she, if there exists positive epsilon such that for any y zero belong a zero one of omega and h three of omega with uh, y zero nor h three of omega less or equal epsilon, the exist control uh, function b belong l two of uh, little omega uh, times zero g such that the associated state y satisfy y h g equals zero in all. It we will say the one is globally null controllable in T if for any y zero belong a zero one. There exists a control function below uh, in L2 uh, little omega times zero G such that the associated state Y satisfy uh, three, three discontinuous. Recently, important progress has been made in the controllability analysis of semi-linear parabolic equation. We refer to the work uh, Suazua, uh, Fernandez Cara, uh, Jean Pierre Puel, Carolina Fabre, Jean Michel Coron, and the references that they. For the controllability of the equation on no local terms, see work of uh, Enrique Suazua, Fernandez Cara, Kelly, uh, Fernandez Cara, Silvano Menezes, and me. For system like one, unidimensional case, per work uh, Fernandez Cara, Taninina, Miguel Nunez, Francieli. Consequently, it's natural to try to explain the no result to equation like one in dimension two and three. The first main result is the following. Under the previous assumption on A, the nonlinear system Y is locally null controllable and any time C greater than C. In other words, there exists positive epsilon such that whenever Y0 belong A0 1 of omega and H3 of omega and Y0 nor H3 of omega less or equal epsilon, the axis control B belong L2 little omega times 0 G and associated state Y satisfy three, three conditions. Gibson H G equals zero. The main difficulties found in the proof are the nonlinear tests appear and the main part of partial derivative operate. We will employ a technical reload, rely on the so-called disturbing inverse in my pan theorem in silver space. Thus, in a fifth step, we must consider a linearized system, it's zero, y t minus a of zero, Laplace and y, equal uh, b characteristic and function, or little omega, plus h, uh, which h t belong q, with lateral boundary uh, y equals zero, one initial state y x zero equal y zero x. We will prove the null controllability of four. We will prove the null controllability of linearized system. Linearized system. The adjoint system of four is given by uh, minus phi g minus uh, a of zero, Laplace and phi equal uh, f one, uh, x g belong t, with the lateral boundary, phi equal zero, phi initial state, phi capital G equal phi G. It's a, it's a second step we will rewrite the null controllability property of an equation for YB in a well chosen space or submissible state uh, control. Uh, H YB equals zero uh, Y zero, with YB belong Y. Uh, and then we will apply the Sternic theorem to the question above, to the question above, and we'll deduce the local desired result from a similar global property for the linear system four. The following technical result due to Forsico and Imanelove is fundamental. Lemma three, there exists a function alpha zero below C2 of omega satisfying this property. Satisfying this property, let us introduce the function uh, m belong to infinite zero g, satisfy this condition, satisfy this condition, a standard uh, alpha zero belongs c two of omega and m belongs to infinite zero g, satisfying this property. Let us set phi x g exponential lambda alpha zero x divided by g. Alpha x equal exponential r lambda minus exponential lambda alpha zero x divided by mg. 
Igual Alfa Baro F y Valle Bainchi. Alfa Baro E y Difis Stretch. Alfa Baro E y Difis Lambda minus Exponential Lambda Alfa Cero. Where are eh, greater than Alfa Cero Infinite Norma eh, plus Logarin 2 where, eh, where eh, Lambda greater than zero. Proposition to one. There exists positive constant Lambda zero. Es zero, si zero. Such that for any es eh, greater or equal es zero and lambda greater or equal lambda zero. Any f belong el tube of q. And any phi g belong el tube of omega. The same solution eh, to adjunct system. Eh, adjunct system. To solution adjunct system. Satisfy this inequality. Eh, this inequality is Carleman inequality. Proposition to one eh, Carleman inequality. If we choose uh, alpha one igual minimum alpha bar of x, where x below omega bar, alpha two igual maximum alpha bar of x, where x below omega bar, such that two alpha one greater than alpha two. This condition is very important. This condition is very important in the proof main result. Then we have used to take r uh, greater than logarithm two plus alpha zero nor infinite, for example. Define rho igual exponential is alpha, rho zero equals exponential is alpha times phi power minus three divided by two. Rho one eh, igual exponential is alpha eh, times m eh, power phi divided by two. And define a similarity, rho tilde, rho two, and rho high. Remark to one, eh, eh, i exponential is alpha one divided by n, eh, les dan exponential es alfa, eh, les dan exponential es alfa 2 de Valle Bayen. Tuan, exponential es alfa 2 de Valle Bayen, les dan exponential 2 es alfa 1 de Valle Bayen. Remar 2 es muy importante, eh, remar 2 1 es consecuencia de esta condición, 2 alfa 1 grande de alfa 2. Teorem 4, línea problem, control línea problem. Assume that the function A satisfies rho zero H belong L2 of Q, rho, do, rho two H T belong L2 of Q, A0 belong A01 of omega, then for linear problem is null controllable. More precisely for any Y0 belong H3 of omega and A01 of omega, directing control B with uh, rho tilde B belong L2 0 T A01 of omega and A2 of omega with Partial derivative with respect to G, Rochil David belong to of Q, and associated state Y satisfying this condition. This condition is good regularity or state. Uh, property nine. This good regularity state. La Plach and Y chi uh, belong L2 of Q, Roja de Square, good regularity or state. And in the hypothesis of pure M4. Rochilda B belong L2, 0 G, A01 of omega, and A2 of omega. And partial derivative with respect to G, Rochilda B belong L2 of Q. Lemma phi is good regularity of control. Or good regularity of control. Proof, lemma phi. We will follow a classic argument due to Forsikova and Immanulov. Let B P0 equal W belong C2 of K bar such that W0 igual 0 in lateral boundary. Uh, define it uh, A, A of W, W tilde in what is expression, is expression. A is an inner product. And to verify this is used Carleman inequality. And can be P as completion of P0 with this inner product. Completion of this inner product. Let G of P in R define it uh, by this expression, uh, this continuous linear form. Uh, from Lex Milgram lemma, there is only one phi belong P solution of A phi Danglo tilde igual G Danglo tilde for all Danglo tilde belong P. Uh, uh, from last Milgram lemma, uh, there is only one phi below P solution this equality. Define C equal uh, minus uh, rho 
zero power minus two phi, B equals C in little omega times zero chi, Y equal minus rho power minus two, uh, power minus two, the star uh, phi. Then we have that B, I are respectively the control and associated state, the phi right. And they satisfy this property. Uh, also front end, then is the property. Uh, Rochilla C, Rochilla C equal this expression, uh, satisfy this parabolic equation. This parabolic equation minus Rochilla C, uh, partially divided with respect to Rochilla C minus Laplacian, Rochilla C equal J1 uh, plus J2 plus J3 plus J4. Uh, using 11, Leaving this property, uh, control uh, and state, satisfy this property. Using 11, uh, J1 and J2 belong to two of you. Uh, also, from uh, estimate uh, L estrella uh, L star phi equal Y rho square, uh, we obtain J3 and J4. Belong L2 of Q, belong L2 of Q. Uh, and uh, Rotilda C satisfy parabolic equation, minus Rotilda C, ma, minus partial derivative with respect to G, Rotilda C minus Laplace, Rotilda C equal J1 plus J2 plus J3 plus J4, and J1, J2, J3, J4 belong L2 of Q. And uh, taking into account, in the con, uh, that Rochilla C in T igual capital T igual zero, we obtain that parabolic regularity. That parabolic regularity, Rochilla B belong L2, 0 chi, A0, 1 of omega, and A2 of omega. Uh, we partially divided with respect to chi, Rochilla B belong L2 of Q. Good regularity of control. Uh, the prof lemma, uh, five. Using lemma phi, we will prove that the solution of linear problem given by 10, uh, the solution, uh, solution of problem linear, satisfies good regularity. Satisfies good regularity. Nine. Uh, okay. We will use energy estimate we will use energy estimate way row one square y, use energy estimate when uh, row one is uh, row square y chi, use energy estimate minus row tilde square la plus and y, uh, we obtain irregularity, we obtain irregularity. Uh, also derivative the problem for we get Y chi chi minus F of zero Laplace and Y chi equal uh, B chi characteristic of function uh, little omega plus H chi. Uh, and they using energy estimate with rho two square Y chi, uh, we obtain the regularity and use energy estimate uh, minus rho hat square Laplace and Y chi we obtain the regularity, uh, the regularity, the regularity, the plus and white T uh, uh, belong L2 of Q, rho hat square. Uh, and finally, and finally, considering the energy estimate minus rho hat square, the plus and white T in the original problem, we obtain uh, the regularity. Uh, this regularity, this regularity, uh, we prove good regularity of theorem four. Of theorem four, well proven. Proof of theorem two, uh, proof of main result, proof of main result. Let y. Uh, y, F, and capital C be the function space, Y, 
y equals yb satisfying these properties. These properties uh, f g belong l cube of q uh, satisfying this property. Uh, uh, we define silver space norm and way and natural way. Uh, yb norm y square equal this property, uh, this expression. This expression is this property uh, and definition on, on y. G uh, nor f square, uh, this expression, this expression is definition uh, f, definition f. Uh, let us consider the mapping h of y uh, in C with H Y B equals Y G minus Gryden a Y Gryden Y minus B characteristic of function of little omega uh, Y zero. Uh, the theorem two, the result, uh, the main result, the theorem two, we will prove it. We will prove it if uh, then equation H Y B equal A Y zero possesses at lot one solution. That you're in two, we will prove it if we will prove it that exists positive epsilon such like that if H Y zero belongs C and H Y zero not C less than epsilon, then the equation H Y B equal H Y zero with Y B belong capital W possesses at least one solution. In particular, this show uh, the state and uh, control belong uh, uh, or spice Y. Spice Y. We will apply the following version of the Sterling inverse mapping theory in infinite dimensional space. Uh, let uh, theorem six. Uh, let y and c be Banach space, and let h of y and c uh, be a seven mapping. Assume that derivative uh, h line of zero or from y and c is onto, and the x is uh, w inverse to the right of h. Uh, theorem c is theorem the inverse to the right of h. H of w C equals C. To applying uh, theorem C uh, in theorem two, applying several lemmas. Uh, the proof of the lemma seven, eight, nine are very technical and use big calculation that we will uh, give a brief idea to demonstrate them. Lemma seven. Let uh, H of Y and C be the mapping defined by 24, uh, 24, uh, 24, 24. Uh, well defined, well defined. N say A is Lipschitz continuous, uh, H, Y, B, norm C square, less or equal, I1, plus I2, plus I3, plus I4, plus I5, plus I6. Uh, Six terms. Uh, definition of spatio y two plus I, I one plus I two plus I five less or equal six uh, y b uh, nor y square. Uh, now analyze uh, you analyze uh, ter I three and I four, which are the most difficult. I three of uh, I for uh, the most difficult term. Since, uh, since A is C1 and globally is continuous, H3 uh, less or equal K1 plus K2. And uh, N less or equal 3, plan A, N is less or equal 3, then A2 of omega contained in L infinito. One has K1 uh, less or equal this expression. This expression uh, is finite by good regularity, is finite by good regularity or state of problem linear. 
good regularity for state, good regularity and I for state theorem for. Uh, Analogous is two, less or equal, this expression. This expression is finite, uh, good property of theorem four, the linear problem. Uh, also, one has uh, I four, uh, less or equal, L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus L4, uh, and uh, L2, less or equal, this expression, this expression is finite, but uh, good regularity of state of theorem linear. Uh, L2 uh, is less or equal to this expression, the calculation, L3 of L4. Uh, Lena 8. The mapping uh, H of Y in C is continuously differentiable, continuously differentiable. Uh, to prove Lena 8 is using theorem 4, theorem 4, uh, good regularity or state. And using the dominate convergence theorem levels. Using uh, theorem four, linear problem, uh, good regularity or state, and uh, theorem uh, dominate convergence theorem levels. Uh, I am going to pass to next slide. The gauge, the mapping, the final by 24, uh, then H line zero zero belong L capital Y in capital C is on. Uh, fear notice that H line zero zero, uh, we uh, Y line B line equals Y C line minus A zero, Laplace Y line minus B line characteristic function of the omega, Y line zero, uh, consequently, H line zero zero is only if and only if for each H Y zero belong C. Uh, X, there is uh, Y B belong uh, capital Y satisfying this equation. Uh, this equation is a linear problem, linear problem. And the existence for Y B with this property is ensured by theorem, theorem two. This show that a line zero zero is subjective. And this end the proof on lemma five. Uh, finally, finally, uh, applying theorem six using lemma seven, uh, H uh, well defined and continuous, using lemma eight, H seven mapping. And using a lemma nine, H line of zero is on. Uh, consequently, from theorem six, theorem two is well from. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is the ending of my presentation. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Juan, uh, for this uh, presentation, which probably delighted uh, uh, Karleman uh, specialists. Uh, so um, please, if you have uh, questions or remarks concerning the presentation, uh, you can use the uh, hand, uh, raise hand button, uh, uh, which is, uh, below the main window. Are there any questions? Yes, please, Enrique. So thank you, Juan. Gracias, Juan, uh, for tu presentación. Thank you for the interesting talk. In your opinion, Juan, what are the most important open questions in this area that uh, has been so fertile in the, in the last, say, 20 years or so? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, this problem, uh, this problem, uh, this problem, uh, 
This problem uh, change uh, y by gradient y is this important problem. Uh, for a global control, global control, a global inverse function theorem will have to be used, but if we will have to solve linear problems with variable coefficient in space such is being independ independent of tooth coefficient, that's very complicated. Uh, 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 yeah. Thank you. I see. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Juan. Thank you, Enrique. Uh, is there any other question? Uh, I, I have a question, please. Uh, uh, I remarked that you use uh, initial data in H3. Uh, is that correct? Uh, the initial data you, you control. You suppose that your initial data is in H3. Is, there, uh, is this true? Uh, at, at the very beginning, I saw. Uh, H3, uh, we uh, oh, uh, we we sufficient larger capital. Uh, we sufficient larger capital T. We also have extra control in zero. If the, we let the solution become small, and then we apply the local result. Uh, for H three, H three initial stay uh, important. important. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there any other question? Uh, if not, uh, thank you again uh, very much, uh, Juan, for this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Thank and you much. Um, we uh, pass to the uh, second speaker of this uh, section. Uh, he does not need any or not much presentation. Uh, Giuseppe Butazzo from uh, Università di Pisa, uh, a well-known um, um, researcher, top researcher in uh, calculus of variation and optimization. Uh, Giuseppe uh, will present uh, uh, us uh, uh, a talk with the title, uh, Variations on a team by uh, Chigar. I hope I, I said it well. Please, Giuseppe. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we hear. Uh, let me use the full screen. Okay, thanks, Doreen, for the presentation. And let me say <clears throat> that is a very great pleasure to be here even if uh, only virtually, I would have preferred to be in presence, but this is life. And thanks to Carlos uh, and to all the organizers for the very nice idea they had to honor uh, Enrique. <coughs> uh, so uh, I was trying uh, to remember when uh, we met uh, first Enrique. So I was unable to, to found to find the date, a precise date, but surely it should be something like 20, 25 years ago. Uh, and in the most recent uh, years, uh, the contact with Enrique uh, became more strict because uh, we started in 2005, I guess. 2005, we started to organize together this meeting in Benasque, 
Uh, at the beginning, the meeting was uh, relatively small, 30, 40 people, but it was extremely successful. Full. And uh, in the last editions, uh, we reached uh, 150, 160 people. After a while, uh, at the beginning, Enrique and me were uh, alone as the organizers. After a while, uh, Olivier Glass joined us and Günther Leugering also. So now we play in quartet. <laughs> And I should say that uh, most of the success of these uh, uh, Benasque workshops are due to the energy of Enrique. So the, the place is uh, wonderful. The, the, the scientific center is really very, very nice, but the, the energy of Enrique was uh, fundamental in the success of uh, the meet. We did already eight uh, edition eighth edition and uh, unfortunately we canceled the 2021 uh, but simply we postponed it in 2022 and uh, hopefully this uh, will take place in this very nice place so let me pass to the scientific presentation uh, this uh, variations on a team by Chiger. so uh, what is the team by Chiga? So let me say that uh, this is a joint work uh, with uh, Luca Briani, who is a student of my PhD student uh, in uh, Pisa, and uh, Francesca Primari, uh, who was a student of mine, and she is now uh, back at the University of Pisa. The starting point is this uh, celebrated the Chiger inequality in the 70s. They found this inequality in the 70s. And uh, the inequality is very simple. The inequality states that if you take uh, this ratio, the square root of the first eigenvalue, lambda is the first eigenvalue of the Laplace operator, lambda of omega, first eigenvalue of the Laplace operator with the clay boundary condition. So if you take the square root of the principal eigenvalue divided by what uh, he called the Chiger constant, this ratio is always bigger than one half, no matter what uh, the domain omega is. This ratio is always bigger than one half. So uh, what is the Chiger constant, H of omega? The definition is rather simple. The Chiger constant, H of omega, is the infimum of the ratio perimeter over measure when uh, the set E runs uh, among all the uh, subsets of omega. Uh, so you have omega, you take all the subsets of omega, take the ratio perimeter over measure, and the infimum of this uh, number is the Chiger constant of omega. And so the Chiger inequality is very interesting because it relies uh, a spectral quantity like the principal eigenvalue to a geometrical quantity uh, as the Chiger constant. So this ratio is always bigger than a half. And so now many questions uh, arise. I should say that this domain is extremely rich. Uh, a lot of open, interesting open questions. So I will try to, to give you a hint uh, on how to solve some of them, but most of the questions are still open. Uh, First, uh, the inequality above is not sharp, is not sharp uh, and uh, many questions arise. What is the right uh, uh, sharp constant? One half uh, seems uh, too low. Uh, what is the sharp constant instead of one half? So this constant should depend on the dimension and uh, nobody knows what is the right one. Second, existence of optimal domains. Is it true that uh, this ratio has a minimum or a maximum uh, in some sense? 
Uh, then generalization to other situations. I will speak about this generalization. And uh, what happens uh, uh, if you, instead of taking all possible domains, you restrict uh, the class of domains by adding some geometrical constraints. So you see many, many questions. And uh, I will try to comment uh, some of them. I should say that uh, uh, this uh, field has been uh, considered uh, uh, by several people. The, the one I found uh, uh, on the literature is uh, the work of Elias Tui, who is now in Erlangen. Uh, an interesting preprint on Hall. Hall is the French version of the ar archives. Uh, this is restricted to the case of convex uh, domains. And uh, also Enea Parini worked on this field. Uh, Enea is the uh, Université de Marseille. And uh, he wrote a, a nice paper on journal convex analysis in 2017, still on convex domains in R2. Uh, the proof is very simple. The proof of the Chigger inequality is uh, extremely simple. Uh, actually, it is uh, simply a smart use of the elder inequality. In fact, uh, <clears throat> the Chigger constant H of omega uh, can be estimated from above by this ratio gradient of V over V, where you take V, the square, of the first eigenfunction for the Laplace uh, operator. If you take the square of the uh, first eigenfunction, is, you see it's very simple, uh, a simple uh, elder inequality gives you that H is less than twice the square root of lambda. Uh, more generally, I want to consider the first the principal eigenvalue for the P Laplace, not only for a desire of a generality, but you will see how important is the P. So uh, the, the, the range of situations which occur uh, modifying the P is very large. And this I, is uh, what I want to discuss. So lambda p is very easy to define. is like uh, the, in, the, in the case of the usual Laplacian, is the minimum of the Rayleigh quotient gradient u power p divided by integral u power p. And u runs in w1p0 of omega. So this is the principal eigenvalue of the p Laplacian. When p equal to one, this is uh, very well, well known, that when p is equal to one, this lambda p, lambda with index uh, p equal one, is exactly the Chigger constant h of omega. And so the natural uh, generalization of the Chigger inequality is uh, that one that you see on the middle of the screen, lambda p power one over p divided by lambda q power one over q is larger or equal to q over p. q is smaller than p. The, the, the classical Chigger case was p equal to, in fact, you have the square root of lambda divided by h, and h is exactly the eigenvalue when q is equal to one. So you see that this is a, the most natural generalization of uh, um, the Chigger inequality. So again, this, uh, this uh, can be uh, proved very easily by a smart use of the elder inequality. Uh, Equivalently, you may multiply, divide by Q, and then you can uh, rephrase this uh, inequality by saying that the P times lambda P power one over P is an increasing function, is equivalent to the inequality above. 
But again, uh, the question about the sharpness of the constant Q over P arises. So let me uh, also discuss the extremal case, P equal one and P equal infinity. So P equal one, as I said, the lambda P power one over P when P goes to one gives uh, the trigger constant H. On the contrary, when P goes to plus infinity, lambda P power one over P tends to one of the in radius. What is called the in radius is the maximal radius of a ball contained into omega. So when P is very large, you approach the reciprocal of the in radius. Uh, so let us define this functional. You see here, FPQ of omega. So FPQ of omega is just the ratio I said above. So lambda P power one over P divided by lambda Q power one over Q. Remember that Q is less than P. So this functional, the shape functional FPQ. <clears throat> and uh, uh, let us define small m is the infimum of uh, this functional, while uh, big M is the supremum. Uh, so um, there are two different optimization problems. The infimum, I want to minimize the ratio FPQ, and uh, I want also to maximize the ratio FPQ. And uh, uh, by now I consider the, the class of all possible domains without any uh, geometrical uh, restriction. So in this sense, the Chigger inequality can be reformulated by saying that the small m pq is bigger than q over p. And here uh, I want to stress the dependence on the dimension d. You see the index d stands for the dimension of the ambient space. This is a very important parameter, the dimension. So the easiest case is in, well, this, uh, this, is always, this always happens. Huh? The easiest, ca easiest case is uh, the one dimensional case. In this one dimensional case, uh, due to the fact that all open sets are union of disjoint intervals, uh, in this case, the functional FPQ is constant. Uh, is constant and this constant uh, can be also computed explicitly is the ratio pi p over pi q, where this pi p is, uh, as this expression, two pi, pi p minus one power one over p and divided by p sine pi over p. Uh, if you put some particular choices for the exponent p, you will find that pi one is equal to two, pi two is the usual number pi, and pi infinity is equal to two. You can uh, see the plot of this uh, pi p as a function of p, you see the maximal value is the usual number pi, which occurs uh, for p equal two, uh, for p equal one, uh, the corresponding number is a two. And for P very large, this uh, uh, pi P tends to two again. So uh, the easiest case is the supremal value. The supremal value capital M. So for capital M, we have a, a complete answer. Well, almost complete answer. Uh, in fact, uh, the, the th well, fr from now on, I take the dimension uh, bigger or equal to two because the case of dimension one is uh, trivial, as I said. Uh, the theorem is the following. Uh, this number capital M is uh, uh, non-decreasing with respect to the dimension D. And this is what happens. 
this uh, supremal value is uh, plus infinity for all Q less than or equal to the dimension while it is finite when the number Q is strictly bigger to the dimension. Uh, it would be very interesting to characterize the value uh, capital M when uh, uh, it is finite. So when uh, the Q is strictly bigger than the dimension. Uh, we do not know, it should be quite a difficult problem, uh, I guess. Um, how do we obtain this theorem? So uh, in the case Q less than the dimension, uh, maximizing sequence, so a sequence such that the value of the function goes to plus infinity is uh, obtained by uh, doing a fine perforation of the unit ball, uh, as uh, uh, you see in this picture. So here you must be extremely careful in uh, tuning the, the radius of the perforation in terms of the distance between the closed perforations. So the right way to, to tune the radius in terms of the distance uh, depends on the dimension. This uh, is what people call the choranesco mura example. So uh, working uh, on, uh, on a generalization of this uh, choranesco mura example, you can show that if you are below the dimension, so if Q is below the dimension, the ratio uh, goes to plus infinity. So this solves uh, the problem uh, uh, equal plus infinity, the supremum is plus infinity. On the contrary, if the Q is strictly bigger than D, the dimension D, due to the fact that the points have a positive capacity, this number M is finite. And then the question arises, what this number is? Uh, we do not, we can prove it is finite. We can give some uh, not sharp uh, bounder, uh, but the characterization uh, is, uh, is an open question. Uh, in the two dimensional case, uh, a reasonable conjecture could be, could be, uh, it would be interesting to prove uh, or disprove this conjecture, but just in two dimensional case, um, that the maximizing sequence uh, is made by removing from the unit disk the centers of an hexagonal tiling, like uh, in this picture, you see. So take the unit disk, we are in R2, and uh, uh, remove from this disk the points, the black points you see on the screen. And these black points are the centers of an hexagonal tiling. This we believed, we believe this should be a maximizing uh, sequence. And uh, on this sequence, we, uh, we may compute explicitly the, the value. Uh, in higher dimension, the situation is much more, much more delicate because this is a link to the famous problems of uh, optimal packaging for which very little is known in higher dimensions. And now let us pass to the infimum, small m. Small m is the infimum of the functional given by the ratio uh, I introduced above. So we know from the trigger like inequality that this uh, infimum, small m, is larger or equal to q over p. And we said that this inequality is not sharp. Why it is not sharp? Uh, because we can prove uh, the following facts. First, uh, uh, this number, small m, the infimum, decreases uh, with the dimension. 
So going up on the dimension will decrease this infimum, the infimum number. And second, when the dimension is very big, tends to infinity, the, the ratio provided by Chigger is actually sharp, but only for the dimension tending to plus infinity. Now, if you put together these two facts, that uh, uh, Q over P, which is the, the number provided by Chigger, uh, is obtained asymptotically when the dimension is very large and that the, this infimum is decreasing, you see well that the, for a given dimension, the Q over P is not sharp. So uh, is only asymptotically sharp for a, a very large uh, dimensions. It would be very interesting now to prove or disprove if you want, the existence of optimal domains, uh, omega PQ, uh, optimal in the sense that they minimize the ratio FPQ on the class of all domains. Uh, there are some hints, uh, I mean, uh, some hints in favor of the existence. Uh, the hints are that uh, drilling holes in that case is not efficient because drilling holes will increase the ratio FPQ. So uh, the intuition says that uh, you don't have to drill holes, but when you don't drill holes, this give, this give a kind of uh, extra compactness. So a good conjecture could be that uh, optimal domains for the minimum, for the small M, I mean, uh, they should actually exist. Uh, in the case P equal infinity and Q equal one, we have uh, the, this ratio F infinity one is uh, simply the reciprocal of uh, in radius times the Chigger constant. And in this case, we, we can compute the infimum, which is one over dimension, one over D while the supremum is plus infinity. And the minimum is given by any ball and the supremum by uh, finally perforated domains. So you see in this case, the minimum exists and uh, uh, it is a ball. Now uh, it is also interesting to consider admissible sets, admissible domains with some geometrical restriction. And here we consider the convexity, which is a very strong geometrical uh, restriction. So we consider this class AD convex, which are the domains in RD, which are convex. And uh, we put a bar just to distinguish. So small m with the uh, with a bar on the top means that we are, um, we are doing the infimum, but on the class of convex domains. And similarly, the capital M with the bar on the top means that we are taking the supremum, uh, but only on convex domains. Uh, again, when P equal infinity, the values of these uh, two extremal uh, numbers, small m bar and capital M bar, can be uh, easily computed. And we find that the infimum is given by the ball, is one of uh, this lambda q of a ball for any q, I mean. While uh, the supremum, the capital M, is given by two divided by this uh, pi q number. So you see in this case, uh, uh, both of them are uh, uh, finite. Uh, the mim minimum is given by any ball, while uh, the supremum uh, is given by a sequence of uh, thin slabs. Thin, what is a thin slab is uh, a d-dimensional domain 
times the integral zero, the interval zero epsilon. And this is a, like a, a thin plate. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, if we add uh, the convexity constraint, these numbers uh, are finite. So the plus infinity now disappears. So you see again, the plus infinity was possible before in the class of all domains due to the fact that uh, um, perforations were possible. Now with the geometrical constraint of convexity, perforations are not anymore possible. And this is uh, why this number uh, uh, capital M bar is always finite. And these are two um, bounds from the left uh, Q over P, the maximum with pi P over D times pi Q. And from the right is pi p times minimum of q over two and d over pi q. And these inequalities follow by uh, a smart use of uh, hirsch protter inequality that you see here, linking uh, the in radius with the eigenvalue and uh, the booster inequality linking the eigenvalue with the Chigger constant. And now again, the, uh, for the, the easiest case uh, is the case of, of the Supremo. We don't have the proof, but a very reasonable conjecture is that uh, the, the Supremum, so the capital M bar, the supremum over the family of convex domains should be pi p over pi q, which means that maximizing sequences of convex domains are made by thin slabs. This is true when q equal one, but we believe this should be true for any p and q. This is for the supremum. So you see the supremum can be at least easily conjectured, not proved, but easily conjectured. What about the infimum? Uh, the infimum is much more delicate. It's much more delicate. Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's see uh, the two dimensional case. This is easier. The two dimensional case is easier. In fact, uh, we can prove that uh, if Q is less than two and P is, big, is bigger than two, P was the numerator and Q the denominator. In this case, we can prove the existence of a convex minimizer for FPQ. Uh, how the proof works? By contradiction, assume this is not true. If this is not true, this means uh, uh, that the minimizing sequence should be made by thin domains. And for thin domains, we know because we are in dimension two. Dimension two is crucial here in this proof. Uh, then we know that FPQ tends to the ratio pi P over pi Q. And then it is enough to produce a domain such that we are strictly below. And this can be done by taking the unit square. Uh, here in this proof, uh, uh, the dimension two is uh, really crucial. For instance, in dimension three, we can't repeat uh, this, uh, this argument. And uh, this works only when uh, the dimension two, not only, and also when Q is less than two and P is bigger than two. On the contrary, uh, it is reasonable to expect uh, the existence of convex minimizers for any FPQ, for any P, any Q, any dimension. Uh, still, uh, even if we remain in the classical Chigger case, the classical Chigger case was uh, P 
equal 2 and the q equal 1. In this case, uh, um, in dimension 2, we know the existence. In dimension 3, nobody knows. Uh, of course, we expect that uh, an optimal domain should exist for the class, even for the classical Chigger ratio. Uh, we are rather close to the, to the proof, but unfortunately there is a small step uh, which looks uh, very difficult. So the theorem is the following. If the mapping from D into this uh, infimal value M sub D is strictly decreasing, strictly decreasing, then we can prove the existence of an optimal domain. But unfortunately, we can only prove that this map is weakly decreasing. In English, we say non-increasing. So as soon as we have the strict monotonicity, this would quite easily imply the existence of an optimal domain. So as I said, uh, even for the original Chigger case, uh, this is not known in dimension three. Uh, there is a very interesting conjecture by Enea Parini that in dimension two, we know that omega optimal exists. So uh, Enea Parini claims that this optimal domain in dimension two should be a square, just a square. And in this case, we may compute uh, the explicit value of uh, this M bar two, which is 1.17 and so on. So if the Parini conjecture is true, this would imply the existence of an optimal domain in R3, you see? A conjecture in R2 implies the existence of an optimal domain in R3. Just because of the theorem I showed about the strict monotonicity. And so let me finish by uh, collecting uh, uh, some open questions that uh, I already mentioned uh, in my presentation. It is nice to see, to see the open questions all together. So first characterize this, uh, the supremum capital M um, when, uh, when Q and P are bigger than the dimension. Otherwise this is plus infinity. Uh, at least in dimension two, I would be happy to see at least in dimension two in higher dimension should be extremely difficult. Uh, second, exist, so in, in, uh, for the Supremo, we do not expect the, the existence of an optimizer. On the contrary, we expect the existence of optimizers for the minimum on the class of all domains. So this is a, a very interesting question. Uh, the question about the strict monotonicity in the class of convex domains is also uh, an open question. And this uh, uh, should, this not should, this implies once you prove the strict monotonicity, this implies the existence uh, uh, of uh, optimal minimizing domains. Then uh, concerning the supremum on the convex uh, uh, sets, uh, the expectation is that the maximizing sequences uh, are made by thin slabs, uh, and which, uh, which gives that the, the supremum is pi p over pi q. Then the Parini, the Parini conjecture that uh, optimal domains for the minimum in the two dimensional case is a square. And this provides automatically the existence uh, of a minimal domain, convex domain in R3. 
So uh, I can conclude by wishing uh, happy birthday to Enrique. Thank you, Giuseppe. Let's open the uh, question session. Uh, uh, are there any, any questions, remarks uh, on the talk of uh, Giuseppe? Uh, yes, uh, Rajah. Hi. Uh, once again, greetings to Enrique and thanks to Giuseppe for the excellent talk. Um, I heard a, a talk of yours some time back maybe in another seminar. I, I was wondering whether it has relation, some of this uh, to the Blaschke, Santalo diagrams and meaning uh, just yeah, curiosity. Whole... And... Hi, hi Rajesh, nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. yeah you are right, you are right. Uh, uh... Uh, yeah, the Blasky Santalo is um, a further step, even more delicate, because mm -hmm. uh, Blasky Sant, when when you uh, are able to draw the full Blasky Santalo diagram, this is much more than uh, an optimization uh, uh, question. So uh, here I was limited to to present the the minimal and maximal uh, uh, values. Of course, there are all the other cases in which you want to describe the blasque santalo diagram. Sure, sure, this, this will be an even more difficult uh, question, sure. Thank you. And I would like a copy of your, like- um, Sure, sure, I will- Presentation. Yes. I will send you. I, I missed the start because it was supposed to start at 9.50 and it started a little bit early, I guess. So. Uh, yes, we are uh, ahead of the schedule a little bit. Uh, the next question, Enrique, please. Yeah, thank you, Giuseppe. So uh, what is the original motivation of this uh, Chigger constant? So it's like the Rayleigh quotient for P equal one, right? Exactly, exactly. This is exactly the Rayleigh quotient for P equal one, indeed. But why, I mean, for the Raleigh quotient, there is a clear motivation is the Laplace and the eigen functions and well, all, all PDE somehow uh, and this use is the, of that. But, but for Chigger, what is the motivation? I think uh, the, the Chigger motivation was, uh, was geometrical. In, in fact, uh, uh, the Chigger uh, inequality uh, as the, the, the original Chigger paper was uh, uh, in the, much larger framework of Riemannian surfaces, where you can uh, do exactly the same. But uh, actually the Chigger constant itself uh, is exactly like the Rayleigh equation. You take the Rayleigh equation for the P Laplacian. So if instead of the usual Laplacian, you take the P Laplacian with P uh, small, uh, close to one, and you get uh, exactly the, the Chigger constant, which has uh, a more geometrical meaning. I mean, the spectral meaning we know very well, the eigenvalues, the spectrum, the Chigger constant can be defined just in terms of purely geometrical quantities. And this was, I think, uh, the motivation by Chigger. And then the, the classical symmetrization techniques to, to show that uh, uh, the circle, the disk is optimal uh, for the circle for is optimal. one yes. applies to Chigger as well. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I see. On the contrary, mm -hmm. uh, let me say why the, the Parini conjecture is very reasonable. Uh, so uh, take the ratio square root of lambda over h, okay? Uh, if you take uh, a smooth, so the domain, the optimal domain, we know it exists, cannot be smooth, by sure, cannot be smooth. Because if you have a smooth domain and you add a small corner, the small corner has no effect on the Chigger constant. While this uh, 
uh, this decreases a little bit the eigenvalue. We know that if you increase the domain, the eigenvalues decrease, the usual eigenvalues. On the contrary, adding a small corner uh, has no effect for uh, uh, the Chigger constant. So this uh, shows that optimal domains cannot be smooth. And this is why Parini conjectured it should be a square. So wh why adding a corner doesn't uh, change the Chigger constant? Yeah, because uh, uh, there is an explicit way to compute the Chigger constant in a planar domain, in a planar convex domain. Uh, you look at the curvature. You see the curvature until uh, until the curvature enters into a corner and then it stops a little bit before touching the corner. So this means that uh, the last part of the corner has no effect on the Chigger constant. So you see, if the domain uh, is smooth, you can add, uh, by, by taking two tangents, you can add the small corner and uh, this is much better than the, the smooth domain. Mm -hmm. But numerically, so, but... It, seems, it seems that the square is right, the right one. Uh, Parini computed the, the, the ratio for uh, regular polygons. And uh, for regular polygons, actually, the square wins. Mm -hmm. It is a good hint. Mm -hmm. and, and if the domain is non-convex? No, if the domain is non-convex, uh, uh, well, I don't know. I don't know because, uh, well, as I said, the perforations are not efficient. So mm -hmm. first you should prove the existence of an optimal domain, which is not clear. But for so, instance, uh, non-convex, but uh, uh, how you say? Uh, simply connected, I mean, like a non-convex polygon, what does it do, the Chigger constant, when you make uh, this square to be non-convex by maybe making one of the sides to be concave? Yeah, yeah, I see. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, I, can, I mm -hmm. can't guess, it's, it's a very difficult, uh, it's a very mm -hmm. difficult ambient to guess uh, mm -hmm. answers. Okay, very interesting. Thank you, Giuseppe. Uh, thank you. Uh, Rajesh, do you have another question? Yeah, maybe a short question, but yes, it can please. be for later. Um, so uh, I, I also think that maybe uh, there should be some connections. You, I, I remember some of your works where some of these things are related to transport, optimal transport kind of questions. So is there connections to optimal transport? in this kind of uh, thing and can well, take from there be used i don't see a direct connection well there are a connection optimal transport with some other shape optimization problems but in this case uh, i i can't see a direct uh, connection if but you find you, one it be very no no but i mean to say that the p going to infinity or one kind of case usually has some like formulation, uh, at least some old work of yours with. Yeah, the, the, uh, the strong links between mass transport and shape optimization are in the case when uh, uh, you do some mass optimization. So you distribute mass inside the domain. But okay. in this case, uh, there is a constraint that a, a domain should be a domain. You don't mm -hmm. distribute mass inside. So the, in, the characteristic function remain characteristic function and not uh, uh, mass densities. Yeah, and one more question. So how, how much of like quantitative uh, isoperimetric inequalities help in answering? Uh, yeah, this, this is a very interesting question. In fact, uh, this could be one of, of the tools uh, uh, that could help in this uh, series of open problems, I said. Well, um, the quantitative uh, 
estimates uh, the, had a very strong developments in the last years. So we have now quantitative inequalities for the perimeter, quantitative inequalities for the eigenvalue, and these are very powerful tools. This, this could be one of, of the uh, methods to attack the, the questions, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have a, a curiosity also. Uh, in the case, uh, uh, in one dimensional case, uh, does the inequality has, uh, have any sense? Uh, uh... Well, in the, in the one dimensional case, uh, everything is constant. The ratio is constant. So, and no surprise. So what, the, what would be the perimeter of uh, a segment? Uh, how two, how the number two, two. Ah, <laughs> the <okay>. two extreme, <laughs> two. <laughs> the perimeter is just the two because you have two extreme two points. points. So well, this, uh, makes, this makes the problem a bit trivial. trivial. Uh, so if there are not, uh, uh, Rajek, you, you have another question? I saw, I see. No, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't lower my arms. No, I don't okay. have for the question. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, well, if there are not any, I see one more hand of Axel. But I'm not sure if it's the hand for a for a question. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, yes. yeah, it's a question. Yes. Okay, it's a question. You are, yeah, your hand is of, of different color. I was <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not true. At, at least in my computer, I was not sure is is the or the same. Yes, please accept. Sorry. No, the, just the the connection with the graph theory in the sense that I, I was reading that this uh, interpretation of the this constant as the conductance on a graph. And my question was if you are working also in graphs. Yeah, yeah. I, I know that uh, the, the Chigger constant have been studied a lot for from uh, people in graph theory, but uh, we did not exploit this, uh, this side. Mm -hmm. But I know that uh, there is an enormous literature about uh, Chigger uh, constant and graph theory. You are right. Yeah. No, okay. no, we, we, we so maybe should direction. be some, some interesting links there. Sure, sure, by sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Axel. And uh, if there are not any more questions, uh, let's thank again Giuseppe for this very interesting question uh, and answers. Uh, okay. I see a lot of hands, <laughs> right? Maybe. Uh, okay, let's uh, pass to the following speaker. Um, uh, in uh, uh, this afternoon session or morning session, uh, and uh, it is a pleasure a pleasure for me to introduce. Uh, uh, Luz de Teresa from uh, Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico. Uh, Lucero was one of my colleagues uh, during the PhD thesis in Madrid. I think uh, she was uh, the first full uh, PhD student of Enrique. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, uh, it is so. Uh, please, Lucero. Well, thank you very much, Sorin. Nice seeing you. Uh, and uh, happy birthday, Enrique. So I, I will start with some memories. So uh, this is more or less three years after I meet Enrique. So maybe I can, so here is Enrique. He was very young. And there you can see Sorin. So Sorin is here, I think. And here is Carlos Conca. Okay. Here, no, Carlos? Yes. Yes. I also um, have this picture. Okay. <laughs> and here is me. My <laughs> okay, so, so, so this is something uh, to recall. And here I have another photo of more or less the same time. Maybe it's one year before in Santander. 
I don't know. So here is Enrique again. And here is me. And I don't see if I recognize them. Okay, so Brezis and I don't know. Luis if, Vasquez. Yes, Juan Luis Vasquez, but I don't know if Sorin was here or Carlos or no, I, I maybe not. Maybe it was before Sorin arrived to Spain. Maybe I, I missed this one. Yeah. Yes, yes, I think so. Okay, so just to preserve memories as Enrique Fernandez Caras says uh, yesterday. Okay, so I start now. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about a hierarchic control problem. So these kind of problems arise in the um, field of game theory. So it's a very uh, long date problem. So uh, in this kind of problems, you have a first player that is called a leader that does a movement. And then you have a second player that re reacts to uh, the first movement of the leader and tries to win or to optimize the response to the leader movement. So this is in general uh, the, the, the kind of problem you want to, to work on. And uh, the historical papers due to von Neumann and Morgenstern in 1943 and Nash in 1915 uh, were very, very important in this field. And uh, here you have the von Neumann paper, but the introduction, and here the full Nash paper. So this is the paper of uh, John Nash. That was very, very important and what is now known as uh, Nash equilibria, in fact, was not due to Nash, okay? It was before Nash. Okay, so there are several, concepts that uh, are around this uh, game theory problem. And when you have two players, you have, uh, or controls, now I'm going to start with control theory, but when you have two players, you have one leader and one follower. This is called a Stackelberg strategy. And then you have, uh, a lot of uh, concepts uh, related with uh, this problem when you have several players. So you may have a Nash equilibria, a Pareto strategy, etc. But I will only uh, focus on Stackelberg strategy. Okay. So I'm going to uh, work uh, here with um, the heat equation. So in uh, 94, 1994, Raglilions uh, presented this problem. So you have a heat equation, linear heat equation, and you're acting uh, with two controls on this equation. So here you have an H and a V that have a, different objectives. So you have two controls with different objectives. So one of them wants to optimize a functional. So the target of V is to minimize uh, this functional. So here you have several things. You have a target uh, function. So you want to be close, so my solution Y wants to be close to this YD. And you have this uh, beta that is important in, in the procedure you will use after, but you only want to uh, optimize this functional, okay? On the other hand, you want H to, uh, to reach a state, so you want a controllability objective for the uh, control H. 
that uh, uh, may be an all uh, controllability objective. Okay, so I'm going to present the the um, para even way of of do that. So here is the, the control objective. So you want to minimize the temperature of the beers, okay? So you put some ice on it, but also you want to open the bottles, okay? So here uh, you have this small part where you open the bottles. So this is the, the control region uh, too. This is the controllability objective and the ice is the uh, other control objective that uh, uh, optimize the function. Okay, so this is a way of uh, seeing these uh, two objectives uh, control problem. Okay, to be serious now. So we want, uh, uh, you, you, the traditional setting is the following one. You have the leader control. So the first player is going to be H. So H wants to achieve a controllability objective. So Y of T equal to zero or an approximate controllability objective, something like that. And the follower control, V wants to achieve given H. So the leader has make a movement, so has done something. And uh, uh, we want this follower control to um, minimize a uh, uh, given functional. So it has an optimization target. So uh, how to solve the problem? So first you have to fix the leader, okay? And then try to optimize, to obtain a minimum for uh, this functional. Since the functional is continuous, strictly convex and coercive, you have a unique minimizer and you can characterize this minimizer as uh, the solution in my, uh, control region O, the corresponding to V, okay, of a solution at the adjoint of the uh, heat equation. So here is the adjoint starting uh, in zero. So this is a backward uh, heat equation. So you start from capital T, but that has a right-hand side precisely uh, the solution of the uh, controlled equation with H, and uh, you have also this objective YD that appears here, and is in the region where you're trying to get close to YD, okay? So this is the uh, way you can characterize this minimizer, okay? So once uh, you have uh, characterized this minimizer, so you are working with mm. two coupled equations. So they are uh, coupled. So Y appears here, that is the solution to the first equation. And then you have P that appears here, that is the solution to the second equation. So they are strongly coupled equations. One is backward and one is forward, okay? So uh, the, the first results about this uh, uh, kind of problems were due to Pierre, uh, Jacques Lillions in 94. And he proved that uh, this system is approximately controllable. That means that they can do uh, Y of capital T least or equal than epsilon for every epsilon, um, uh, working with this uh, couple system. Okay, so in fact, it's approximately controllable to zero. So only they, they want to get uh, close enough to zero. Okay, and um, 
very recently, like six years ago, uh, at Arun and Fernandez Scott and uh, the team there, proved that when uh, the control region, so omega, small omega is the control leader, is the control region for the leader control. So they can prove that when uh, this OD, so the target uh, region, let's say, and the leader control region has uh, non-empty intersection, it is possible to drive the, the solution of the first equation. That is the one that is important for us. You don't want to do anything to P. P is only a characterization of the optimal control. So you don't want to do anything to this equation, even, even if they are coupled. Okay, so they can drive the solution to zero of y. So you, you have a, this leader control is doing its job. If uh, you have a growing condition on your target yd. So this growing condition is, uh, appears because of Kahleman inequality. So in fact, this rho square is related to Kahleman inequalities. So you can control a heat equation with a right hand side if this uh, right hand side uh, goes uh, exponentially to zero as capital as t goes to capital T. Okay, this is a kind of condition uh, related with controlling a heat equation with a right hand side. Okay, so they prove that this uh, problem is uh, not controllable. Okay, so how to solve this problem? So you have to prove an observability inequality for the adjoint to my couple system. So now we have to work with uh, this, uh, this system, okay? So you have to work with the adjoint to the system and the adjoint to the system uh, is here. It's again, one equation backward that corresponds to Y and one equation forward that corresponds to P. Okay, so this is the, the adjoint. And uh, as is known, you have to prove an observability inequality. And in this situation, the observability inequality you need to prove is this one. So you want to observe phi at zero, okay? And theta with uh, some uh, weight here in front of theta by uh, observing it from the control leader region uh, and in time zero t, okay? So you want to prove this observability inequality and uh, to prove uh, this observability inequality, uh, at least uh, Araruna et al prove it using uh, Kahleman inequalities and the fact two things that are very important is that theta at zero is zero, okay? This is very important to prove the, the, the inequality and also that you can choose beta to be large enough. So this you have beta as a parameter in your equation. So recall that beta was part of the functional I wanted to minimize, okay? So this was uh, the parameter you wanted to minimize. So once um, you prove the uh, observability uh, inequality, you can define as the leader control to be H, 
uh, equal to phi hat, where phi hat is the solution to my adjoint system that minimizes this functional, okay? So here you can see that you have the target yd that was in the minimizer problem and uh, is multiplied, no, sorry. And it is multiplied by theta and that's why you need the uh, inverse of the weight. So here you have rho minus two and I have rho square here, okay? So they are uh, compensating in Helder inequality or Young inequality. However, no, they are compensated the weight one with YD and the other with theta, okay? So the, the problem was solved in, in this situation. And uh, there are several words related with uh, hierarchical control. For example, for heat and wave equation, Lyons in 94, ocean circulation models, Stokes, moving domains, and in general, all of these problems were uh, had an approximate controllability objective for the controllability problem, and they minimize uh, uh, the, the minimizer objective was uh, the classical one, and the other one was the approximate controllability for the control uh, objective. Then uh, Araruna, Fernandez, Cada, and Santos uh, work with linear and semi semilinear parabolic equations, and they prove control to trajectories. Also, uh, Araruna, Meneses, and Rojas Medar work with uh, micropolar fluids, but uh, they get an approximate controllability result. And uh, I have some uh, results with uh, Victor Hernandez Santa Maria on couple parabolic equations and also some uh, results with Christian Montoya uh, for uh, Stokes systems. Okay, so um, now what I am going to present is uh, a new result with Enrique Fernandez Cara. Uh, Bianca Calzavara and uh, Jose Antonio Villa. And the thing is that we, we change the roles of the target of the leader and the target of the follower, okay? So it's like with the beer. We wanted to uh, um, consider like, uh, as a secondary functional, um, so the, the one related to the follower. So we are going to minimize something, okay? But the idea is to drive the solution to zero, but with the follower. So the weights that appear here, will warranty that uh, y at capital T is equal to zero. And we want the, uh, the V, the leader control to minimize a functional. So when you revert the, the, the objectives of the uh, follower and leader control to solve the problem is very different. Okay, so first, uh, given V, that is uh, my leader control, I uh, want to uh, obtain a follower control that drives the solution to zero. So now the follower wants to drive the solution to zero, okay? So um, we need to work in uh, 
weighted spaces because uh, we know from uh, classical uh, controllability results for the heat equation that if you want to control a, a heat equation with a right hand side that now is going to be this V that is the leader control, you need V to uh, decay exponentially to zero, okay, at time capital T. So uh, we are going to work with a weighted um, Sobolev spaces and these weights rho zero, rho and rho zero here are related with Karleman inequalities. So what do you want to, to do? So uh, you have a leader control and uh, you associate to each leader in this space, you uh, want to find a follower control. So V is given, you want to obtain F that depends on V that uh, minimizes a uh, functional, but in fact, uh, I am, the objective is not to minimize. This is only a technique, okay? In fact, what you want to, to obtain is uh, v, uh, F, sorry, drive to the solution to zero at capital T. So the, the, the objective of the follower is uh, Y of capital T equal to zero, okay? And then we look for uh, admissible control, so the, the, the optimizers of my functional, primary functional. So you will have an optimizer uh, of the primary functional, but of course, once you move this uh, control, you will have a different uh, follower control. So you will have uh, a, a admissible control that satisfies that this primary functional on V hat and of in F of V hat is going to minimize uh, this function, okay? So as I said before, the weight functions were, are related with Karleman inequalities. Um, I think that almost all of you have heard of Karleman inequalities, even if you don't know how to prove them, but you have some weights that depends on the control region. And uh, here is the, the, uh, the dependence on the control region. So you have uh, this eta zero that uh, has no critical points outside the control region omega. And uh, you construct using this eta zero uh, some weights. So here are the weights. And the interesting he point here is that uh, you are dividing by a function that depends on T. And in fact, uh, uh, this function uh, vanishes at capital T. Okay, so this is the key points in the weights. So uh, you have these weights, and I'm I am going to use these weights to um, solve my uh, follower uh, control. Okay, so uh, the main result I am going to present here is the following one. So if we consider the linear system with a in l infinity and y dot in L2, then for every leader control V, so given this V in uh, this weighted space, you have exactly one function, F of V, that minimizes the uh, secondary uh, control uh, objective. 
And if uh, you set P tilde of V to be the solution, uh, the functional that depends on V and F of V, then you have only exactly one minimizer of this primary functional in U. And consequently, you have one associated follower. So it's like a, a structure uh, scaled that you have to, to use. So to prove uh, this problem, as uh, Juan Lima proved this morning, he solved a four order uh, partial differential equation using Kahneman inequalities. So in fact, we, did some, we do something like that. So we defined uh, LA of Y is the uh, parabolic equation uh, forward and the adjoint is the backward parabolic equation you uh, work on a uh, space p dot that uh, are a continuous function that vanish on the boundary c2 uh, continuous c2 functions in omega times zero t and there you can define a symmetric and bilinear form that is uh, related to Kahneman inequalities. So you define this uh, symmetric and bilinear form on P0. And uh, in view of the Kahneman inequality, you can prove that in fact, uh, the symmetric bilinear form is a norm, okay? So you can induce a norm uh, using this uh, bilinear form because this is your Kahneman inequality. So this here you have all the weights that appear uh, before and, and you can uh, see that this in fact induces a norm. So you can complete uh, the space using this norm. So you work on the completion of P dot with the norm induced by the Kahneman inequality. And then given a, a leader control in my weighted space, you can find a, exactly one solution using Lux-Milgram theorem. And uh, the F of V is precisely uh, given by uh, this uh, related to the solution of uh, my uh, Lux-Milgram problem, okay? So in fact, uh, here you have this was that equal to V P prime and Y dot P prime in zero, okay? So this is, just a solution to a lax one problem, okay? And in fact, you can construct why the solution to the uh, original problem as uh, rho minus two, the adjoint equation to P. So why is going to be given in this way, okay? So uh, this is how you prove it. So just like Milgram, as I said before, and then uh, you get that, okay? So now you have uh, this uh, function that uh, as uh, for V, you get the, the, the primary uh, functional that you want to minimize. And you can see that it is well-defined C1 and is strictly convex on U. And therefore you get a minimizing uh, control uh, of this primary functional. So this uh, minimizer, 
is uh, has can be characterized as the solution of the following optimality system. So uh, you will have f of v hat again as before, y hat to be like that, so as before. And now it's much more complicated because v, v hat has to solve uh, to be like that, is given like that, where psi hat solves also a four order problem. So when I put here an M of P prime psi hat, you have uh, this four order problem that I put before and uh, you, it is solving this problem with phi hat uh, here, okay? So you have like a chain of uh, solving problems, okay? So in this way, we can reverse the roles of the leader and of the follower. What happens if you want to solve a semilinear problem. So when you have a semilinear problem, uh, we are going to have much more difficulties to solve this uh, uh, hierarchic control problem. Again, you can consider your secondary functional, okay? and your main functional. And uh, now we lose the convexity of the functionals S and P, okay? Because of uh, this nonlinearity. So the way we can act is to solve the, uh, or to linearize, to solve, the problems, so we linearize, okay? And we solve for each Z in L2 of Q, we solve the hierarchic control problem, okay? And in fact, this is why we need, or at least this is the technique we were able to, to put in practice, okay? Uh, we need to minimize the functional to characterize the optimal, not, not the optimal, but the um, uh, control problem, the, the one who drives the solution to zero, okay? We, we did it minimizing a functional, the secondary functional, because when we want to obtain the, the fixed point, you need to in some way uh, construct this null controllability problem uh, associated with the follower control, okay? And in this way, we're able to uh, construct a minimizing sequence and then uh, obtain the fixed point for the, the result. So uh, what we did is find a follower in the nonlinear situation and uh, we, you have to work on this set where you have a, a pair F, V, F, so V is the leader, F as the follower, and F uh, belongs to the uh, followers of V. So given V, you have F, okay? And you uh, can see that uh, you have a coercive and secondly weakly lower semi-continuous functional to this pair. And uh, you can get a minimizer in G 
that gives the solution to our problem. So when you modify the roles, you get a much more uh, difficult problem. So we also solve a multi-objective uh, problem with uh, Pareto equilibria. We work also with a distributive control leader plus a boundary control follower. So uh, here things get uh, more complicated because you have uh, some boundary control followers. So the one to drive the solution precisely uh, to zero from an uh, optimizer control leader that is minimizing this functional. And then um, we are finishing now with uh, Jose Antonio Villa, with my student, uh, a problem with both controls on the boundary. And there you need, uh, so compactness results. And in fact, we work with uh, the leader control in, uh, uh, H1 half one fourth of the boundary on this kind of results with uh, fractional sobolev spaces are required to obtain the, the, the good uh, control um, results. And also we are working with this uh, modifying the roles of the leader and the follower with the wave equation. And there are, I think, a uh, lot of problems, open problems, uh, working with uh, other equations that have to be solved. Okay, so uh, I know here is not. Thank you very much to all of you. And I finish with uh, uh, happy birthday, Enrique. So the most important thing is the Teorema, okay? So here is a bottle of wine I found in, in Spain that is called Teorema. So <laughs> it's, it's not a, it's like that. You find it in the, in the wine shops. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Lucero. Uh, please uh, keep the bottle until uh, our next uh, meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are there any questions, remarks, uh, please? Uh... So, actually, I have a question for Lucero. This picture yes. in uh, Santander, can you show it again? Uh, yes. I was trying to figure out. Wait, wait. Okay. Let me share my screen. Yeah, so uh, there is, yeah, there is uh, to the right, there is, uh, you mark myself, then there is Tomeu. Tomeu is the chairman of our department in mathematics in, in Madrid now. Uh -huh. Then there is Berziz. Then there is Juan Luis Vázquez. Yes. And behind Juan Luis Vázquez, there is Ireneo Peral, who uh -huh. unfortunately passed uh -huh. away this winter. Uh, 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 Here, no? A That's colleague good. and friend from, yeah, for, from Autonoma de Madrid for many years yes. that unfortunately will not be with us uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, in this edition. So, yeah. And, and then uh, the, the, the person next to Juan Luis is, is George Papa Nicolau? I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it's George Papa Nicolau, yes. right? The guy with right. the hair. Yes, yeah. it is Papa Nicolau. And then the next one is, is uh, Madalena, right? Madalena is the wife of, of Ireneo, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the next one is, is Paul Five, right? Is he yeah. Paul Five? No, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. Paul I was five, very right? young. <laughs> the guy who, well, I mean, he, he did many things, but uh, in particular, he has, uh, you know, these celebrated papers in 
in uh, traveling wave solutions, uh, five mm -hmm. and Magleo and and so. And then the next one, just before you, is is Fernando Quiroz. Okay, yeah, but I mean, I was curious whether Ireneo was there, and yes, Ireneo is just behind uh, Juan Luis and and George Papa Nicolau. So yeah, good. Thank you. And then and then if you go back to the to the previous picture in Almeria. So this was uh, actually you see in Almeria there was uh, next to me to the right there is uh, uh, Christodulu right Christodulu was at that time in uh, in Princeton and and it was just that summer maybe maybe ninety three I think it was in summer ninety three that. Uh, that Viles, uh, you know, anticipated, announced the proof of uh, Fermat theorem, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh, and uh -huh. then, and then Christodoulou was was shocked, right? Because he said, "Well, this guy has been sitting uh, in the office next to mine for years without talking to anyone. Nobody <laughs> knew what he was doing." And then, you know, <laughs> suddenly this summer he opens the door and says, "Oh, I got the proof of, uh, <laughs> of Fermat theorem." Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that was 93. And probably, and probably as you said, uh, uh, Santander was a bit earlier, right? Yeah, I think it was okay. uh, the year before, yes. Okay, so thank you, Lucero, for, for all these many years of, uh, of friendship and, and support and collaboration and enthusiasm and good work that has led to, well, such a now uh, rich uh, family, right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All the best for Chema too, right? Yes, thank you. Are there any other questions? Just an observation. So it happens yes, to please. be Carlos' birthday, so many happy returns, many feliz cumpleaños, Carlos, also. Thank you very much, Rakesh. <laughs> right. Hope so. We have your anniversary. Today? Yes. Ah, felicidades. <laughs> Hombre, felicidades. Eh, casualidad. Thank you. Thank you. Muy, bien. Muy bien. Happy anniversary. Feliz cumpleaños, Carlos. Muchas gracias, sí. Eh? <laughs> uh, I, I would like to ask uh, uh, Lucero if um, the relative position of the uh, two uh, supports uh, is important in this problem. I remember that in uh, sensitive uh, problems, uh, it was a big deal uh, uh, how the supports are uh, uh, related uh, if uh, uh, they uh, intersect or not, and, and so on. Uh, yes, is in this course. situation the same uh, problem? Uh, yes, we have, we have the same thing, but now the uh, the important set is the uh, OD where you have this target objective YD. So you have uh, to have non-empty intersection uh, with this set where uh, you with the control you want to drive exactly to zero. No, the solution or to approximate controllability. No, it's related with this set. But is it, the, is it follower necessary? Control, the follower control and the leader control cannot have uh, an intersection because you cannot act on, it's not natural to think that you can act on the set where the leader is acting and then you modify the behavior of the leader. So in fact, they have a non, they have empty intersection, the control leader set and the con follower set have empty intersection between them. But then you, you have a, a, this condition uh, of non-empty intersection between the lead, the, the control to zero and the set you have the control. So this is related to the optimization problem. You have these two equations, okay? Um, any other question? Uh, well, uh, if, 
Yeah. Raising his hand. Axel, Axel. yes, please, Axel. See, in this context of, of uh, Stackenberg equilibrium, etc., uh, Kahneman inequalities are giving some insight about numerical methods in the sense of trying to obtain global minima in this minimization step. I, I don't know if I my question no is idea. I think that the we have with uh, Victor Hernandez Santa Maria and Frank Valle some results, numerical results for insensitizing controls that are not exactly the same kind of equations that you have to, to solve because when you have an insensitizing control, you don't have this strong coupling, okay? So as, as you see, when uh, you obtain this coupling of the, the result by Yadaruna, I had these two equations. Maybe I can share again my screen, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's, uh, Talking with hands in mathematics is very difficult, no? Uh, okay, so you have uh, ah, no, this block, okay, no, not here. So here, okay, you have uh, these uh, uh, two equations when you have the, um, leader control that drives the solution to zero and the follower control that solves some optimization problem. So this is the, the not my result with uh, uh, Enrique Fernandez Cara and Bianca and Jose Antonio, but the result of Araruna or Fagner with Enrique and Mauricio. So in their result, they have to solve a non-controllability problem for uh, this system, okay? So you have this uh, heat equation coupled with this one. So it's like you have a strong coupling because P appears in the equation of Y and Y appears in the coupling of P, in the equation of P. So it's a strong coupling. When you work with insensitizing controls, you don't have this term. And of course you don't have YD, but YD may be zero, okay? So for insensitizing control, we have some numerical results with Frank Boyer and Victor Hernandez Santa Maria. And there we can solve uh, with, with the weights and all that. So it's related with Kahneman weights and that. We can solve this problem of driving, in fact, uh, P to zero at zero that is related with, uh, as I said before, insensitizing control problems. But here, I don't know what to do with uh, numerics. I am not an expert in numerics, so maybe young people or numerical experts can do something about that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? Well, if not, uh, let's thank again uh, Lucero for the nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, and uh, now I think uh, uh, we have uh, we have a break. Uh, of course, uh, these breaks are not so nice uh, as uh, it were uh, <laughs> when we were together. Uh, but uh, that's the situation. Uh, so we have a break until um, eleven forty, I think. Yeah. So about. Uh, uh, 25 minutes. Okay. See you. See you. See you. See you. See you.
Qué gusto verte, Sorín. Un abrazo. Igualmente. Te, te llamo luego, por WhatsApp. De acuerdo.